Hi, welcome to the Digital Fifth FinTech Show. Today we have with us Tejasvi Mohan Ram, who is the founder and CEO of Rupee Power. Rupee Power has an interesting product called Rayton, which is used by leading startups, uh, banks, and NBFCs for their lending journeys. So, for example, customer onboarding, underwriting, the entire processing. They have their sort of power a lot of entities in the country as of now. Tejasvi also has investment in multiple startups as a as a angel investor. So he'll, I think interesting part is he'll give a perspective both as an investor as well as a founder, both sides of it. So good, great to have have him on board. So thanks, thanks, uh, Tejasvi. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's so, great being here. Absolutely great to have you here. So a quick question for us before we jump in. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you want to give a quick perspective of uh, your own company, which is yep. uh, Rupee Power, which has a product called Credit On, yes. and also the investment you have done. So we have a perspective from that side before we go forward yeah. further. So essentially, Crediton enables traditional lenders to, to digitize themselves okay. or consumer lending. Um, we have an origination stack that enables you with uh, collecting customer details, doing paperless KYC, mm -hmm. um, decisioning with all sorts of traditional and alternate variables, and of course, the entire workflow processing of the loan itself. Okay. So. Um, in terms of relevance, the platform is used by large banks, small banks, NBFCs, mm -hmm. and fintechs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's currently being used by about 16 lenders in India. Very and nice. across these lenders, we, we enable them to disburse credit cards, personal loans, uh, loan against property, and, and some SME loans. Mm -hmm. And we have enabled the disbursal of about $8 billion of credit. $8 billion. That's, yeah. that's not a small money. Yeah, it's, it's not small money. It's uh, a huge number of customers as well, considering a large part of this comes from credit cards. Okay. And we work with a whole host of uh, lenders, large names that you would have heard, the largest banks in the country, small finance mm -hmm. banks, NBFCs and fintechs. Okay. Um, okay. As a part of this journey, over the last six years, we have also done some investments in uh, fintech startups, okay. uh, namely Moneybloom, which is a B2B fund management platform mm -hmm. for intermediaries like banks. Riscovery, which is digital insurance, Zimio, which is the intersection of HR tech and fintech, and Ancora, which is finance for the gig economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the startups that we have invested in. Um, normally, we are the first investor. Um, we do that because we know the founders, we have understood their product, we have understood their pain points, and we have, under and we have seen how they have approached the problem over a period of time. Oh, very interesting. So. Uh, I, interesting, I mean, very close to the fintech community, but we've never invested ourselves. Uh, maybe next time we will do, we'll do it together, I guess. Yes, we should. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Some of these are actually, we have done as groups okay. of fintech entrepreneurs or consultants, influencers. And it's mm -hmm. actually quite interesting, the various viewpoints that come across as a part of an investment decision. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think since you are at an intersection of both uh, retail and SME lending and also on the investment side, so I think it will be great for, for us to understand what's your view on the impact which coronavirus has on uh, the lending industry in specific and maybe fintech in general, general. All right, let me start with lending industry. I think as in the way we see this, there is revenue loss for corporates of about one to three quarters. Okay. Um, I think that's substantiated by the view that Bajaj also came out, Bajaj Finance also came out with a few days back. They are looking at a one quarter revenue loss for corporates. We are mm -hmm. looking at it as it could be anywhere from one to three, three quarters. A substantial percentage of revenue loss. Now, when it comes to consumer lending, the most important factor, let me start with the salaried employee. Um, employment is the biggest driver of the consumer lending yeah. industry. The longer this stress lasts, the effects on employment are going to be disproportionate. Which right. means if this lasts for just one or two months, then the current moratorium that we have, along with a little bit of restructuring, should right. be able to take care of the problem. And then right. we'll see a return in demand as well as a, a correction in portfolio quality. Perfect. But if this were to last for five to six months, there will be disruption in employment. Um, once that happens, then there will be, there will be some sort of portfolio level problems at lenders. Um, mm -hmm. We will obviously see at that point a two-prong uh, um, diversion of good lenders and not so great lenders. The ones with poor underwriting and mixed with poor capital base will get you know, wiped out. 
compared to the first set. That's our view going for to the next three to nine months. Hopefully, mm -hmm. in nine months we should all be fine. There should be a vaccine, and we should all be uh, we should all be fine. But at the end of the day, what this also means is that the whole um, rush to underwrite and to in reduction of rates that we saw over the last few years mm -hmm. is going to stop. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a it's going to be a lender's market as opposed to a borrower's market. So if you just saw the difference between uh, um, between I think yesterday Airbnb raising capital versus some of the other uh, Slack kind of companies raising capital a few quarters back, the difference in terms is so huge. Airbnb I think raised capital yesterday, Correct. and the terms are just like humongously different. So it is going to be a lender's market for the next few um, start in the in the coming at least one year. And the way we look at it, it's at least we are going to become a better ecosystem. We're going to have better quality lending coming out of this. At least we have to see some optimism out of this entire um, crisis that we're going through. When it comes to SME lending, there will obviously, there will be pain, whether it's one quarter or three quarters, there will be a lot of pain. And unless we have a QE4 or a PPP that's happening in the US, happen in India as well, some of these SME lenders are going to have big pain ahead of them. Uh, and one of the offshoots are that operational ex uh, excellence in terms of negotiated restructuring, collections, possession is going to become recovery, is going to become important. So in that sense, lenders who have vintage and who have experience of doing this in the past will, I, will do better than lenders who don't have the experience of doing things like restructuring, collections, recovery uh, over cycles in the past. That's our, um, so whatever happens, there are painful decisions for everybody ahead employers, employees, SMEs, um, you know, lenders, borrowers, everybody will have some difficult decisions to take over the next few months. Any, any views on the wealth side of it? Because this is lending side. Any views on the wealth side? <sighs> it's, a difficult, it's an even more difficult one because on the wealth side, there might be an erosion of demand for mm -hmm. a while. Uh, there is no surplus capital to invest kind of scenario if this lasts long. Having said that, assets are cheaper um, than ever before. So the smarter ones would obviously be dipping their toes into either funds or direct investing into stocks as we speak. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it might lead to certain demand destruction on the wealth management side for a while if this lasts for longer. That's no, I agree. I agree. I think. So uh, I was trying to invest in one uh, one of the stock or in mutual fund, and yeah. I saw the volatility volatility levels, and I said, "Boss, I can't really survive this." So I said, <laughs> "I really can't come back, invest maybe a lakh, and then come back and say ten thousand yeah. is reduced next day. Yeah. I just can't handle." It. So I just stopped tracking it completely. So yeah, anyway, so you might get in ten percent too late and get out ten percent too early if you're in a scenario like this, Correct. and it's just too volatile to. And and we have anyways we have not earned money just like that, right? So yeah. we have worked like crazy to get here. Yeah. We put money and this vanishes. I think uh, I'm not in that business. Yeah. So anyway, I've not stopped looking at uh, stock at completely. But interestingly, my SF is still continuing. The only sad part of it about it is that uh, I'll come to the different question from this this side is that uh, the banks are not able to process SIPs because they don't have the back end engine and people to sort of track things when they are not there. Yeah. And the problem which I am have, having is that good 50% of my, 50% uh, actually means I have six SIPs and three of them are now getting uh, bounced by a leading bank. So it's very frustrating. So wow. I think uh, the question I have is that now that we know what doesn't work now in this scenario, because yeah. so we are in a BCP situation, things are not working. In this situation, what do you think should be the approach for banks? Because they know exactly what doesn't work. Yeah. And why it is so critical to have it up and running because finally you are losing business, right? So any perspective on any, uh, any areas? So I think the one, if there is a silver lining in the middle of all this, that will be to do with the fact that every bank, every brokerage, every mutual fund, every insurer is going to come out of this thinking like a fintech. Um, for the last 12 years, I guess all these large financial institutions have put in billions into digital organizational transformation and what have you. But no amount of digital transformation projects or consulting initiatives can actually replace a crisis, right? A virus has, will end up making it. Everybody is now working from home, which right. was 
completely impossible to think of four weeks ago. Yeah. So believe it or not, in when we are when we are out of this, every entrenched fin, fin, financial services player is going to be thinking like a fintech. There are going to be better processes. Um, smarter way of doing things and a lot more digitization and a lot more openness in adapting digitization. Um, regulations, again, um, if regulations keep up, but that's one silver lining that is definitely going to happen out of this. So fintechs, for fintechs, it's both a threat and an opportunity. The opportunity that the world is more open to digitization, but at the same time, uh, the, the entrenched players have gotten a lot smarter um, so it's both a, an opportunity and a threat. Um, this is this, I think, if regulators keep pace and they allow for presenceless, contactless KYC to happen, I think this is about the right time. It's no longer a good to have; it's a must to have. Um, sitting where we are, so if our regulators can actually push that through a lot faster, we will see a huge host of digitization coming in across lending, insurance, mutual funds, and the kind of problems that you, uh, you said about the SIP, right? Um, every, lend, every bank, every intermediary should have a digital platform for consumers, investors to manage SIPs. That should not be a problem. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the focus has always been on payments. I think uh, yeah. what the world needs is a good collection method, which is written yes. in nature and not capped by a 2000 rupees as a number. Yes. So finally, the lender wants money back in a structured manner rather than a dependent on human touch and all, right? Doesn't Absolutely. Work. Absolutely. So I think this is going to be one great outcome if there is a silver lining out of a crisis that the world is going to be a lot more digitized and the world is going to be a lot smarter and leaner, um, which is which is a positive I'll take. No, in fact, we write a, this is our leading block for this week newsletter, which is saying that I also always predict that it will take three years to five years for anybody to become like a fintech from a banking perspective. But today I'm saying that it will be six to 18 months because uh, the shock which they've got, I think that will push them to move faster, not in yes. terms of uh, just adding as a business strategy, which is separate and then digital strategy is separate. I yes. think that will merge together into one structure. Yeah. Uh, so. uh, just working, just 70% or 80% of the organization working from home is a sufficient exercise to see what all exists processes and flab we had till three weeks back. Now I'll talk about the flab later on because I think the, there's a there's the other side of shock which is coming, which is a bit of retrenchment as well. So yeah. what we move to uh, something from your perspective. So how have you handled this situation in credit on? Yeah. Uh, what are the problems you have faced? How you have come out of it? What kind of challenge you're facing on work from home and otherwise? Yeah. Other than doing some homework as well, right? Everybody else is doing the <laughs> stuff which you know More than the homework, two noisy kids who I have managed to somehow shut them up okay. in the room. <laughs> they're, they're safely away in the room. Uh, two noisy kids, it's enough to go to the basement and start doing vaccine research. Okay. Other, other than that, um, I think the, the first starting point was getting used to the idea of everybody working from home about three and a half weeks back. Thankfully, we are a complete, uh, very engineering heavy organization. So it took us just a weekend to get that set up. Okay. Um, not a problem at all. We have enough, what should I say, brains behind that to um, to, to sort that out. So r remote working, information security challenges, access, um, coordination between teams, that was not a challenge by, mm -hmm. we thought about it on Friday, but Tuesday we were up and running. So that's that was not a challenge in our case. Where it was a challenge is that 60% um, of our revenue comes from, is linked to disbursals of loans or setup of cards. Now that 60% obviously is a zero. Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully the remaining 40% of our revenue comes from licenses, um, fixed rate contracts, uh, minimum guarantees, mm -hmm. things like that. So basically for the time being, we have to make do with 40% of our revenues. Okay. So we went about this extreme cost cutting spree, any unrequired server servers that we had, redundant um, lease lines, office mm -hmm. space, we just cut it all out within the first week. Um, so hopefully, and we are obviously pushing for receivables to get all of that on time. I know it's not easy to get receivables easy, back yeah. in this scenario. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody is passing the, this thing that we are in cash flow issues. Even if they are not, I think that's what the statement is very regular now. Yeah, and I think it's everybody's responsibility at this point in time that if you see a 
supplier or a vendor or a partner who is smaller than yourself in terms of balance sheet capability, it's your responsibility to pay on time. And that's something that we are following actually from, from the last three weeks. So we have tried to pay rents, uh, you know, small, the people who supply water to the office, you know, things like that. We have tried to clear off their bills earlier than usual because pretty sure their businesses are going to be like the most impacted among all of this. Um, so what we're trying to do is to get out of this break even. I think that's going to be um, a wish list. We are going to obviously incur some losses um, in the meantime, but over time we have been a, we have been a profitable organization. So if this lasts for three to nine months, we should be able to last it out. Uh, that's not a challenge and work, for, work from home while it can get monotonous. We have also realized uh, that we can be a lot more productive. Um, we don't have useless meetings, um, you know, office chit chat, politics, you know, the usual stuff that happens in an office. We don't have any of that anymore. So we're more on point, um, you know, discuss what needs to be discussed, get on with it. There's more work being done actually. We are, and some of the, some of the initiatives and products that we had left in the lurch are all getting picked up, getting implemented. So in that sense, for a digital organization, at least that, that we are, uh, some of these things can actually turn from a, from a problem into an opportunity where we are working on new products sitting. I'm sure many of uh, the organizations will pivot in this scenario because they will realize a new business models, uh, which they can now adopt. Yeah. Uh, so one of the new products that we are working on is actually portfolio management and collections. Mm -hmm. Um, not just as a platform that if tomorrow we see loan books go bad, then there might be ARCs which actually need these kind of products. So we are working on something like that. This obviously from, we have been thinking about it for such a long time, uh, but then you know, we never brought that product to completion. So th all those dates have gotten accelerated. No, in fact, I was telling uh, something and advising someone saying that uh, I think the attraction to underwriting should be zero right now because yes. uh, there's no book getting built. I think the yes. need is right now on the collection side. So if yes. you can just go all out, hammer and tongue, yeah. talk at collection side and improve the process, I think that's what uh, yes. the value will get created. And in fact, um, uh, it's collections and recovery. Absolutely. So I think uh, lenders in India, we have, as lenders, we as a part of this ecosystem, we have forgotten what recovery and possession of assets means Correct. for a while now, especially on the consumer side. Um, hmm. I think the last time there was a huge recovery in terms of cars or uh, vehicles was way back in 2009. Right? Right. It hasn't happened in large numbers since right. then. So is there a smarter way of doing it? Well, that's what we're, we should all be exploring at the moment. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think, so we spoke at the, at the economy level, the customer level and all. Now coming to individuals, right? Uh, I'm sure as uh, the organization has figure out where the challenges are. Maybe some may not survive. Yes. Some may have to cut costs by, by even reducing those talented resources, they, which ideally they should have had for a long term basis. So yes. what should the employees think and plan? Because they have a bit of a time. Some of them surely have an extra yes. time right now. What should they do to sort of get ready for the future? So one of the words that I guess we're all hearing a lot more on television these days is the word called furlough, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to pronounce it, but furlough basically means that people take voluntary leave for 10 days in a month. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking on this idea. Uh, if, if, you, if you see an employment contract, I'm, I'm talking more from the sense of engineers um, and a product manager kind of organization. The rest, you know, I'm not in a position to comment about the rest. But when it comes to engineers and product managers, what I see is that employment is one part of it. Mm -hmm. But let's say we get used to a world where the new normal is everybody works for only three to four days a week mm -hmm. for their employer, but the employer makes it easy for the employee to take up consulting assignments on the side, mm -hmm. free to do it mm -hmm. as opposed to this no compete, non-compete kind of, um, kind of contracts that we have. I think that's the kind of world that we as both employers and employees need to get used to over time because Full on retrenchment also has its costs, mm -hmm. both for employer and for employee. Correct. Um, big time on for the employee, but also for the employer in the long run. So I think it's time for employers and employees to jointly work out arrangements where 
the number of working days per week or per month are reduced. But at the same time, engineers, product managers can use their skills and their talent to work on other assignments, consulting assignments or work on other projects, which are in the gig economy, so to speak, mm -hmm. where uh, people can take up projects. And I think that's something that we all have to be open to going forward. Um, it's, it's definitely where we'll all go because these skills are transmutable across employment and projects. In one of our investee companies, they're actually going to start and work on a new product. They were looking to recruit in February. Uh, obviously that didn't happen. Now the project is being done by seven people, one product manager in Gurgaon, designers in Goa and uh, engineers in Bangalore and Delhi. Okay. And it's actually doing really well is um, the quality, the timelines and uh, jokes apart, all the seven people have never shook hands with each other. Okay. But the coordination is perfect. It's actually working really well. And I'm, seeing it and I'm realizing that we should be able to use our skills in as many diverse directions as possible. So mm -hmm. I think it's time for if anybody from engineering and product management has to start thinking how they can leverage their skills into mm -hmm. freelance projects, um, go to sites where such projects are being put up, mm -hmm. be part of organizations or teams or loosely bunched group of individuals who deliver on such projects. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, we will see an acceleration of the trend of the gig economy, especially when it comes to skills that can be delivered digitally. We mm -hmm. should all be prepared for it, both as employees and as employers. I totally agree because I think uh, uh, the usage of each individual is will be different, right? And the other thing I see is that when people work in only one organization, one role, I think they get to tend to sort of pick up only one skill. Yes. Sort of never get rounded off and they can't really handle the other side of the issues, right? Yes. Absolutely. So this is a great opportunity. If everybody looks at it as panic apart, the first phase of any new thing coming at you is panic. Now that the panic phase is over, it's time to actually have reflection and have a deep refle reflection, look at the future. It will be a different future. There is absolutely no doubt about it um, and get used to it. No, I agree. In fact, we were like, uh, always people are always asking, can you have digital classes instead of physical? Yeah. And we never did it. And we now have it and it's working fine. So I'm just thinking aloud, why the hell I never did online courses because they're far better to, to manage. We don't have to figure out a place. We don't have to figure out the food arrangements. We don't have to figure out how to entertain people differently. I think people come, they do their work and leave. So I think trainings have go, maybe perfectly well gone well for us. So yeah, just look at the two of us, right? We have interacted more than we have over years. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, I think. This is superb. In fact, uh, I never I thought that I will come back to podcast, but I'm able to do it now. And uh, the fact of the matter is two things have changed. People have more time for this because now they can sit at home and do it. This yes. is good. Second side is that people don't expect some high-end uh, machinery for this. They are okay with this because what they're looking at is content, not the sort of uh, structure and saying, you have a great device, great lighting. I don't think people are looking at that. People from CNBC are working from home. Exactly. I know, like, you know what the inside of every CNBC reporter's house looks like today. And it's absolutely fine. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Uh, thanks for joining today. And thanks I think so we got a lot of new insights. Thank you. Thank you. for Thank joining. you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.